I'm Monty, the software engineer. This is video one of QT QML tips and tricks. Uh, in this video, we're going over how to dynamically create QML objects. Okay, so I'm starting out with a fairly basic uh, QT Quick application here. Um, just has a, a window uh, with the main background on the window that is uh, light gray, uh, some label text. Uh, it's just saying some label and a button that says click me. I'll just run it to show you Here it is some label button that says click me it does nothing right now when you click it uh, Under the main.cpp uh, Haven't done anything with this. This is just the the standard um, Code that's in here when you do a file create new so that has remained unchanged uh, Here let us show you what you don't want to have happen, right? So Let's create a new rectangle, and we'll call this the second uh, dialog. Um, we will anchor in the center, anchor center in parent, and for the size, let's do uh, parent dot width divided by two. Height, we'll say parent dot height divided by two. And we'll give it a color of uh, blue. Why not? Um, and we will say that right now visible false. And when we hit this button, we will say second dialog dot visible equals true. Okay. And we will uh, let's put a button in here. Button ID hide window button uh, we'll put it in the center of this new window anchors dot center in uh, parent and then text will say hide me and on clicked we'll say second dialog dot visible equals false okay Let's try this, see if it works. So here, click me. This blue window is shown. Hide me. It is now hidden. So having this second dialog here embedded into uh, this main.qml uh, is something that I see a lot of beginners to even intermediate QML developers uh, doing. Um, and the reason why you don't want to do this uh, in this scenario, it's okay. It's not going to be a big deal. Um, One-offs, uh, even sometimes I'll I'll leave it in here. Um, but when you go to scale the system and you want to add more dialogues, uh, whether they be error messages or you know status messages or, or really any dialogues at all, um, as the application itself grows, you're going to start filling up one document full of QML files. So being able to separate them and dynamically create them uh, makes the code more organized, uh, segregated into their own files, as well as increased performance as you don't have you know a bunch of objects just hidden in the background and made visible whenever you want uh, to interact with them. So what we're gonna do first is go to file, new file project, We'll say we want to go to QT, QML file. Uh, here, I'm just going to be placed in the same folder as uh, this project, which is fine. And I'll just name it second window.qml. Finish. So here's our second window. I will split it side by side so I can see this one, our main one. And I will just uh, copy and paste this, actually into here. Uh, and the reason why we're seeing this button uh, give us an error is we do not have this import statement. And now it should be good. So now that we have the code in this second window.qml, we need to be able to use it in our main.qml. Since the second window.qml and the main.qml are in the same directory as seen here, main.qml and second window.qml, we should be able to just use the second window.qml. Second window ID 
second window. Uh, actually, let's name it second dialog so that we can just make it work uh, right off the bat. I like to run uh, QMake after any time I add a, a new QML file, just so the uh, make file is aware of the new QML file. Let's hit it, click me, still works. Okay, now that we have the second window working, here from the Senko window.qml and our main.qml, this doesn't really solve our initial problem uh, with the second window being an object that's created, taking up resources, uh, CPU, memory, uh, and just being really hidden and shown whenever we want to interact with it. So first, let's get rid of it, and let's put in some code to dynamically create this QML object. So what I like to do is I like to create a holder for it, and I'll just say second window, and set that equal to null. Now this will just be a, a, a blank object that's equal to nothing. And let's do a function create second window, and when we click the button, we want to say create second window. So when we click the button, it will call this function right here. And in this function, let's first check if window is equal to null. So if we've already created the object, we don't want to go ahead and create it again. So this will just only run when the second window is uh, not already created. Uh, we'll do a var component equals cute.create component and we want to call it second window dot qml now this works only when this qml file is in the same directory as this uh, file that you're working on so here we can see that they are in the same directory so we can just uh, call it by name here um, if for example it was in a different directory like one above and uh, and say different folder, that's how we would use that. But since it's in the same folder, we can just do it like this. Then we will say second window equals, and our second window here is this object here, component dot create object. And we'll place that uh, in the root uh, with the parameters x equals zero, and y equals to zero. Then we will go ahead and check to make sure that our second window object was created uh, properly. So it cannot be equal to null. And if so, let's place that uh, in our main background. So second window dot anchors dot center in um, and we'll say main background oh this is actually going to be equals um, so let's see when we create it it will call this function and then it will create this object and then set it in our main background oh we're gonna to have to say this is going to be true so let's try that out to see what happens. Click, and here we go. We see the second window being created with its button. Um, we can hit that, it will just hide it. It won't necessarily destroy this object, which we'll go into next. Uh, let's go ahead and do that anyways. Um, so if we click it here, we can see again, it's not doing anything because of our check here. Second window, uh, it's checking to make sure the second window is null. And since it's not, it's not going to create another one. So our button in our second window, all it's doing is setting the visibility to false. So it's not necessarily destroying that object and it's definitely not making the object uh, equal to null. So let's go ahead and do that. So to destroy this second window and make it equal to null, let's first make a function, destroy second window. First, let's make sure that the second window is actually a valid object and it's not equal to null because we don't want to destroy uh, an object that isn't uh, even an object. Uh, so let's say second window dot 
destroy. And then we will set second window equal to null. So now that we have this destroy second window function here, we need to know when to call this function in order to destroy the second window, set it equal to null, uh, in order for this create second window function to be used properly. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to add a signal to this second window. Let's call it uh, hide me clicked. And in the button, instead of setting it equal to false, we will just say uh, second dialog dot hide me clicked. And this is essentially the same uh, in C++ as if we were to write, you know, emit hide me clicked, right? So that kind of does the same thing. And then over in our main.qml, we're going to want to connect uh, this signal to this function, kind of like how we connect signals in slots. So we will say second window dot, and then we'll do the name of the signal, hide me clicked dot connect, and we will connect that with destroy second window. Uh, and I don't think we want that. And now let's try it out. We'll hit run. So here we'll hit click me. This is the second window that was dynamically created. If we hit hide me, it should emit the hide me clicked signal and should have destroyed this second window here. So now let's try it again and we can see it works. 